America is going to be paying a very expensive price for having turned her back against her God. The inevitable price that America must pay for having preferred another gospel in the day of her judgment will be very expensive indeed and very real. The prophet Ezekiel in chapter 14 verses 12 through 14 spoke of the judgments that are upon the United States of America at this very moment that you watch this video. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, if a country sins against me by committing unfaithfulness and I stretch out my hand against it, destroy its supply of bread, send famine against it, and cut off from it both man and beast, even those, even though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in her midst by their own righteousness, they could only deliver themselves, declares the God of Israel. You say that's a pretty sharp and harsh and lunatic kind of a remark to be making. Maybe, maybe not. But let's pause for a, mer uh, for a moment, America, and let's just take a look at how God sees the United States of America rather than what's come to be so very politically correct in America today, in our American culture, to particularly include what's most accepted in U.S. evangelical Christianity. We as a nation... I've stated for many years now in looking up to the heavens and saying you know what your Ten Commandments God we don't agree with them they're not politically correct they're illegal now and on that note the very mention of your name it's illegal now federal state laws mandate the mention of your name is illegal in this country and if that weren't enough we as a nation have legislated federal and state laws promoting the sin of premeditated murder abortion latest estimates hold that somewhere in the neighborhood of between 50 and 55 million innocent helpless infants each and every one created in the very image of God himself have been slaughtered in this nation each and every one created in the image of God himself just imagine the blood that spilt upon this nation for that one sin alone whose blood cries out for justice even as you hear and see this video and if that weren't enough we now have a sitting president who's just now endorsed and promoted the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah homosexuality and if you think about it there's not a whole lot left for a righteous God to continue much further with the United States of America. But judgment. One of the most devastating forms of judgment that God speaks of to nations who are most inclined to become very secure and comfortable and self-righteous and self-sufficient in a day of judgment is their silver and gold. But the prophets of old write, their silver and gold in the day of their judgment will become worthless worthless what will America do in the day of her judgment while it's yet called day Jesus himself said it would be just like in the days of Noah men's hearts haven't changed any Jesus said straight or narrow is the way that leads to eternal life and only a few are going to find it but broad and wide is the way that leads to eternal destruction and most will go in there at Jesus isn't up for election in 2012. He doesn't have to be politically correct. He never was. And he doesn't need our money. He's not broke like so many 
spiritual pastors would have us believe in this country today. He's God. That was his son who was strung up on that cross. Not in hate speech. Not because he wanted to condemn. But because he wanted to redeem every single last soul he possibly could. But only to those who would recognize that his son was on that cross spilling his own blood for the sins that you and I have committed against him. That we not perish in eternal torment in hell in the day of our judgment. It is written. It is appointed unto all men once to die, but then the judgment. My dear friend, on that day, when that final breath has left our lungs, we'll be immediately ushered into that throne of judgment before a cross. Our parents won't be there. Husband and wife won't be there. Children won't be there. Best friend won't be there. Your pastor won't be there. I won't be there. Your rabbi won't be there. Your bishop or pope won't be there. It'll be you and your lonesome. And the one who paid the price personally for the sins that you and I have committed. And you'll have one question. Did you recognize my death in your place by turning from your sins? And unless we can say yes, Lord, with all of our hearts bowing down before that cross, we'll immediately be cast into hell for time and eternity. Where there's no exit door. Where Jesus describes there's torment, there's weeping, there's gnashing of teeth where the fire will never go out. There's no exit door. It's not like in America where you get a second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth chance. When you're in hell, you're there for eternity. Never to have the option, never to have the option of ever being removed from there. Not for 50 or 70 years, for time and eternity. No one preached more and warned more about hell than the Lord Jesus. He doesn't want anyone there. What will we do, America, in our day of judgment, do with this Jew that was strung up on that cross in a day of judgment while it's yet called day? Jesus said it would be just like in the days of Noah. Men's hearts haven't changed. People will be eating, drinking, marrying, buying, selling, investing, texting on their cell, making plans for the next 50 years. And in that very moment, something unusual occurred. It started to rain. The righteous judgments of God in the form of rain. How intimidating can a little rain be? It didn't stop for 40 days and 40 nights until every human being on the entire planet was destroyed. The only ones to survive were those who heeded Noah's call and got on the ark. Today, the Messiah of Israel, Jesus the Christ, is extending his Father's hand. Son, daughter, I love you. Give me your hand. You're going to drown out there. I want to bring you in the ark with me. What will you do with this Jew, this Jesus of Nazareth, in a day of this nation's judgment? Medical authorities tell us, had you recognized this Jew, the people called Jesus from Nazareth before his Roman crucifixion, you couldn't have identified him. You couldn't have recognized him afterwards. He was nothing but a bloody, beat-up, bruised piece of meat having some semblance of a man hanging on a tree, innocent, and God Almighty in the flesh, taking the wrath and judgments that were due you and I in breaking and violating his laws, not to condemn but to plead that we would be made right with our God and recognize the blood that was spilled on our behalf in our wicked ways, that we not perish and end up in eternal damnation for having snubbed our nose at that most beautiful Jew that ever walked the earth was strung up on that cross. What will you do with this Jew that people call Jesus in the day of your judgment? American.